Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I just realized I don't have a bulletin over here. I can go with that one. I should have one in both spots, right? I was playing is called Take O oh, Take Me As I Am. It's number 85, which we're going to sing later. But I'm going to play it now again. As we prepare our hearts for worship, let's enter into a time of worship together. If you'd like to look at that while I'm playing, it's number 85 and more voices. We probably have something in the past. You don't need to sing it now, but use it as a time of prayer and Think about God's love in our lives today. pray with me. Holy and living God, we give you thanks for this wonderful, glorious day. We give thanks for our time of worship, and may it be a blessing to all, both here and those watching online. May your Holy Spirit remain with us as always. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, let me try to get the right one first. What Wondrous Love Is is number 147 in our regular hymn book. What Wondrous Love Is This.
So welcome everyone to our time of worship today. Just looking around to see who all is here. Hi. And I'll say hello to everyone online. I haven't done that recently. So we have one person online. Huh? Hi, Allie. Allie? Hi, Allie. Everybody say hi to Allie. Good morning, hi. Allie. <laughs> nice to have somebody online, for sure, for sure. There's no real announcements today. The flowers are in memory of Jackie French, and I believe today would have been her birthday. So uh, a time of remembrance and celebration as well. I have a bit of a story I'm going to tell everybody this morning and hopefully not upset too many people. This Wednesday, I will be in the, the church office about 10.30ish for coffee if anybody wants to drop in and say hi. Um, and then next week, 1st of September, we worship as normal. And then the following week, we'll have a blessing of the backpacks. So those of you who work in schools, those of you who go to school, there'll be a special prayer and blessing um, as that happens. So we welcome all for that. And there'll be more information about other things happening within the church community, the, this congregation of faith, um, as we get into the, the month, as we get busy. So how wonderful that is. Does anybody have a celebration? Yes. Here. On Wednesday, this one turns 17, and on Saturday, that one turns 9. 17 and 9. Well, happy birthday. We should sing. It's a good thing I'm not over there because I can't play. But happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Renan. Happy birthday to you. Yay! I hope you have a really good week and lots of celebration as we head into Labor Day weekend. Anything else? Yes, Doug. On behalf of my family, I would like to uh, thank everyone for the many tributes and also the words of comfort and support. Today is Ruth Jackson's birthday. We would like to honor her memory by inviting you to receive a flower as you leave the sanctuary. Again, thank you. Thank you, Doug. It is a, a good and pleasant thing that we're able to worship together and not only to worship but to support one another in times of joy and in times of sorrow. So we are here. Pardon? There was another hand up? Sharon, go for it, Sharon. I mean, I didn't see your little tiny hand. Thank you. Babe and mom are fine? Yes. Wonderful. That's exciting Wonderful. news. I'd love to hear about the story of new new life in our congregation. Yes. Well, on that note, you folks prayed very fervently a year ago this time for our premature baby Arlo. And yesterday he celebrated his first birthday. So he's a real miracle. So thank you for all yes, your definitely. prayers. Definitely. That's wonderful news. Okay, have I missed anyone? No? Okay. Gotta, gotta check with my choir, because they, they help keep me on track. It's a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to do this thing. I'm borrowing a golf club. Thank you for moving those flowers, by the way. They were kind of in my line of sight. How many of you golf? Come on, you, you can own up to it. Do any of the women go? Come on. Brenda goes. I know. Sherry goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
I did when I was in high school. I haven't since. So when Bob landed me this, I'm going, it's really heavy. But I'm going to tell you a story. I don't know whether you guys can see me or not. You can see enough, right? And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Maybe I'll move it over a little bit more for a bit. <laughs> Just to be sure. I'm not doing much of a swing here. But I have a story to tell you. There were three men on the golf course. That's not unusual. What was unusual is that there was Moses, there was Jesus, and there was a gray-haired old man. So you got the picture? Moses, Jesus, gray-haired old man. So Moses steps up, tees up the ball. I'm not going back very far. Hits it. Ooh, right into the pond. You did it wrong. You didn't do the wiggle. I didn't do the wiggle. It went right into the pond, right? So Moses walks over to the pond, and he goes like this, right? The water's part. He goes down into the, the sand underneath, chips the ball right up on the green. Next up, Jesus tees up his ball. This is normal, right? Takes a swing. I'm not doing a wiggle. He takes the swing, and the ball bounces on the water and stops. So Jesus goes over, he walks on the water, because that's what Jesus did, chips it up into the green. Are you with me so far? Then the old man gets up, and he tees up. And he's looking around, he's watching everybody. Back he goes, boom, right into the pond, right down, splash right down to the bottom. You'll never guess what happens next. A big fish, a carp, comes up with the ball in his mouth, jumps out of the water. A seagull comes by and takes the ball out of his mouth, flies over the green, and drops it right in the hole. <laughs> Jesus looks at the old man. He said, come on, Dad, stop showing off. <laughs> I don't normally tell those kinds of jokes, but it kind of fits with my message this morning and it fits with our scripture. I think we can all show off when we get a hold of one, right? So today is the story of Jonah, the big fish, the carp, right? Big, although it was bigger than that, would have had to have been. I'm gonna skip around a little bit in Jonah because to get through the story, it, it would, we'd be here till this afternoon. But it begins. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittal, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon that sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. The captain came down and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up. Call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us. A thought, so that we do not perish. The sailors say to one another, Come on, let's cast lots so that we know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? He responded, I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men who were even more afraid said to him, what is this that you have done? 
For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you for that sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up, throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. So, to paraphrase, they did that. They threw him into the sea, and then he ended up in the belly of of a great fish. And he was there for three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord, and out of my distress he answered me. Out of the belly of shell I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounds me, and your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waiters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. At the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed away from me forever. Yet you brought me up from my life, from the pit. And the Lord my God, as my life was ebbing away, I remember the Lord. And my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spit out Jonah onto dry land. Here ends our reading from the Hebrew stories this morning. May God bless us and our understanding to these words. I'll come back to that in a few minutes. My message is entitled, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll go where you want me to go. The story of Jonah, we learn as children, how many of you have heard this story before? Many of you have heard this story. Jonah was asked to do something. He was told to do something by God. And he decided he couldn't. No, I'm going to go the opposite way. So he wasn't a Hebrew. He knew the scriptures. He knew the Lord. He's going to Joppa. He wasn't going to Nineveh. No, 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 no. He didn't want to do. He was afraid. He didn't want to do what the Lord had told him to do. And what was he told to do? He was to go to Nineveh and ask the people, tell the people that they needed to change their ways. They needed to repent. They needed to turn from sinning. The word came to Jonah a second time, it says in chapter 3. Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. It was an exceedingly large city, three days' walk across the whole city. Wow, sounds like fun. Jonah began to go into the city, going a, a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh, shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh by the decree of the king and the nobles. No human being, animal, no herd, no flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about 
the calamity that he had said he would bring on them. And he didn't. And he didn't. So, I mean, that's just a bit of the story of Jonah. There's a bit more that we won't go into today, but I'm trying to picture what it would be like First of all, to be thrown overboard because people think you're the cause of the waves and the wind and the storm. And then to land in the belly of the fish. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it have been nice to at least have a candle in there? The fan is just too hard on this today. There we go. Nope. That probably happened in the belly too. Every time you'd light it, the, the fish would slop around a bit, and there we go. You'd need a light, just like we need a light, the light of Christ. Inside this great belly. I think you'd be afraid. I know I would. Can you imagine the smell? Oh, yeah. The garbage that'd be in there. He eats fish. Terrifying times, for sure. But what was Jonah doing? He was avoiding responsibility. He heard God's call on his life. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. Have we ever done that? Have we ever <clears throat> had this little nagging feeling that we should do something? We don't know. I, I can't do that. So short story, when I was contacted by the search team here at Linden, I said, no, in my head, I don't want to live in the city. I certainly don't want to live in Hamilton. But I felt the Lord calling. It was a big step to move from almost nowhere to somewhere, from the big city from the little crossroad community to the big city. I prayed. I wasn't in the belly of a fish, but I knew that it was time for me to look in other places to see where the Lord was calling me. And this was where the Lord was calling me. And I'm thankful that the committee sought me out. See, I didn't even reach out to Lyndon Park. I didn't. They reached out to me. And I believe that was the hand of God. Tapping me first on the shoulder. Then after the initial interview, kind of going, come on now. You've heard of all the stuff. You know all the things you need to know. What are you waiting for? And I waited. Yeah. So God calls us, but he doesn't, he, she, God, doesn't always call us in ways we understand. And it's not just once. God's call on your life can happen at any time. And in fact, for some people, it seems to be a call on your heart and on your life. Every single day, every morning you wake up, we give thanks to God for another day. God has called you. God has called you by name, the scripture tells us. And there's only so long that we can avoid that call on our lives. I suppose there are people in the world that get that sense that God wants them to do something and they go, nope, 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 and turn their backs. But it's a good thing that they don't all turn their backs. And it's a good thing that it doesn't take a disaster to help us change our minds. Because that's what it took for Jonah to change his mind. He was a devout Hebrew man. He knew the law of Moses. He knew the laws that were brought down from the mountain. He knew the history. He knew how to live. And yet, he didn't want to be that prophet to go into this evil city. I 
that's a tough job to go into a city and stand up on the street corner and tell people to change their ways. That's not the kind of prophet I am. I need a bigger megaphone, I think. And it's not the call that God has placed on my heart. At least not yet. That could change, right? We don't know. And when we pray, and we pray without ceasing, we pray daily, there's opportunities for God to place call on your life. And how are you going to step into that call or into a new role or into a new prayer life, a new scripture life, a new life of meditation? I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord, is how the song goes. The time in the great fish, the whale, the, the large fish, was a time of reflection for Jonah. And sometimes we need that too. We need to find ourselves that quiet space. And sometimes that could be on the mountain brow, right? Where we can just be and look at the beauty of the world around us. Other times it could be in the sanctuary of our own home. Time for quiet, reflection, and prayer. And that's what it was for Jonah. He said, look, I'm going to die. Talk to me, God. Scary times happen. And God can't always change what's going to happen. God may not necessarily step in and physically put a hand on you and pull you out. But God will if you listen, show you a way through it. God didn't tell us that life was going to be easy, but Jesus said, I'm with you always. Always, Jesus is with us. In this story, I also see a God of second chances. He gave Jonah a second chance. And actually, and I think I mentioned this last week, Veggie Tales has a great book, great story on Jonah. And I think they called it the God of Second Chances. And how wonderful that is, that we know that there's a God that will give us one more time, one more try. And actually, it's more than that. Every time we turn from God, every time we mess up, every time we think we've done what we shouldn't have done, God is there. There is no limit to God's forgiveness. It doesn't matter what you did this week. I mean, it matters. But God forgives every single time when we turn to God and say, look, God, I messed up. And we're forgiven by God. We may have to go and do something to fix the situation, but... We are always forgiven. Sometimes, I think it's really hard to understand God's will in our lives. Am I supposed to do this? Should I do that? Lord, help me. It's like the old story, and I, I believe I've shared it here. The minister, I, I asked him, you know, there's a space for me to go this way or go this way, what do I do at the fork of the road? And he said, you bend down and pick it up. Well, that wasn't very helpful. But it showed me that sometimes when we're faced with a dilemma, it's up to us to do something. We can pray and we can speak with others about a situation but it's up to each one of us to pick the fork up ourselves and make the choice. God will be with us regardless of, of the choice. If it's a poor choice, a sinful choice, then God is with us and will forgive once we turn back onto the right road. And if it's the right road, God's going to 
help us along and show us another road, another decision. Poor Jonah. The story continues, and I'm actually not going to read it, but I'll tell you what happens. So Jonah goes up on the hilltop overlooking Nineveh. And he sees, he's waiting for the power of God to come down and destroy the city after the three days. Nothing happens. And while he's sitting up there, he's really, really hot. It's, you know, it's the Middle East. And the Lord has a fig tree grow very quickly and brings him shade over him to protect him from the heat. But Jonah gets angry. And I know there are times when we feel this kind of anger where somebody's done something wrong and there's been no punishment. There's been no chastising. There's been no retribution even. Jonah was angry because God didn't destroy the evil people. And the more angry he got, the more leaves fell off the face. And he sat there, finally, with no shade, in the heat, sweat pouring down him. And he's crying out to God, why? He said, I forgave them. They turned from their evil ways. I forgave them. And I will forgive you as well. I think that's where we also need to be, that we can pray And it's really none of our business what other people think of ourselves, right? It's none of my business what Ina thinks of me. Although I hope she thinks I'm okay. But it's really none of my business. And it's none of my business as to how God reacts with other people. Or how there's this interaction with other people with God in their personal life. That's not my business. My business is to help people find God in a situation. But it's not for me to go, "Uh uh-uh, you shouldn't do that. And I don't like doing this. I hate it when people point. You know, it's like this. You should be pointing it at yourself. Man, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Well, sometimes we have to correct people. But we also have to know that there's a God of grace that will step in and help and guide in the future. So be not afraid. Don't be afraid. The Gospels tell us this. The Old Testament has stories like this. Don't be afraid. Have no fear. I'm with you always. No matter how far we run from God, God will say, have no fear. Child, I'm with you. And I think that's the key point we have to remember. That even... In the bottom of this boat, where everybody's panicking and Jonah's sleeping, I don't know how he would do that. God was with him. He was thrown overboard and thrown into the belly of the fish. God was with him. He spit him out, put him on dry land. God was with him. He went into Nineveh to share, and God was with him still again. And even on the mountain top, where the fig tree grew and then died, God was with Jonah. And I believe that God is with each one of us in the same way. Have no fear. God is with you, not just for this moment or this day, but always. And may we find a blessing in that. Amen. So let's sing our Lord Voices song, number 85, Take O Take Me As I Am. Summon out what I shall be, set your seal upon my heart, and live in me. And let's sing it, let's sing it three times through. Oh, 
always surprised. So since it's my last Sunday playing, and Sylvia will be back next week, um, let's have a couple of your requests. Christine. Uh, number Sing the first and the last verse, and I'm going to take this down a little bit more. We'll stay seated. Do the first and second verse.
357. This one's a, a tough one because... No, no, it's, it tells the whole story. So let's do the first and last. Um, no, let's do the first and the third because it says, tell me in accents of wonder how rolled the sea. So that kind of plays right into that. Let's do that. So one, three, and five. How's that? Does that work for you? Sure. Yeah? I'm already getting in trouble. Oh, well, we have one more on this side, then we'll come back, okay? You're not in trouble. Somebody over here had a hand up. Yeah. When there was a Sunday school back in the early 50s, Sunday school teachers always started off the service with number 365. 365. <laughs> Jesus loves me. All right, well, we'll do for the first verse. Okay. Okay. Was that the one that he wanted? No? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please be seated. That gave me goosebumps, so thank you. A wonderful hymn of praise. Will you pray with me? Holy and living God, in this time of joy, in this time of sorrow, in a time when we may want to hide and run in a dark space, we ask, oh God, that you be with us. We pray for the joyful thoughts, the joyful things that have happened this week, for the new birth, for the birthday celebrations, for the celebrations of lives throughout the summer that have touched our hearts so deeply. We know, oh God, that you are with us, whether we're in the belly of the great fish or in the beautiful sunshine or the bright shining moon. You are with us. You are with us in the laughter in this space, in the sharing and hearing of good news and challenges, in the sharing and hearing from the gospel and from the old, old stories. We give thanks for the voices that are lifted up in song, for those who are here and worship faithfully. We pray for all of the families represented here and those at home as well, that they may feel God's presence, that we may all feel God's presence, not just for today, but all days. And for the things that we've done, the things that we've run away from, give us strength, O oh God. Help us to turn back to the God of Moses, of Abraham, of Isaac, the God of Jesus Christ. And know that when we do turn our lives around, that we are forgiven and that Christ is there with us with a comforting arm, with a comforting look, and with love beyond compare. And today, for those who can, Let's sing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. This time I'll ask that the offering be brought forward. Oh, I lost it again. What's the hymn number for our offering? If somebody can give that to me. Five. Five, four, three. Thank you so much. We give thee but thy name. Just the first verse, and Marla, you can bring it right in. And we'll give thanks. Please rise if you're able.
And our closing hymn this morning, Take My Life and Let It Be, number 506. Another hymn written by Francis Havergal. The tune is Mozart. It's a classic, classic tune and wonderful words from a great writer and hymn writer. for suggesting hymns that we can share with one another. And today's suggestions, I'd say, oh, but the last one, were connected with the message. So you were listening. You were all listening, and I, I think that's wonderful. So thank you so much for doing that this week. Also know that if you're out on, on the golf greens, I was going to say field, but it's not a field, right? The course, right, out on the golf course, that you don't need to brag, and you don't need to tell somebody that they're showing off, but know that God is with you, and if the ball goes someplace else and gets caught in a fish or a bird, you say, thank you, God, for helping me. Give praise where praise is due, always. And now may we go in peace to love and to serve in our lives and in our communities. May the God of creation go with you, brother Jesus, who walks with you, and the Holy Spirit that surrounds you be with you this day and always. And we'll sing.
said, 